right, welcome to church. I'll turn this up a little bit. Hey, Tara, spotlights, please. You love it when I do that, don't you? All right, guys, we're so, so glad you're here. There is some seats up front if you're in the back looking for something. Uh, we've got several over here where Tommy's walking. and We're so glad you're here at Renovation today. I'm the associate pastor, Hayden Dennis, if we've never met. Catch me after church. I'd like to talk with you. But got a few announcements. The important ones, they write like this. So just so you know, I'll save it for later. Um, upcoming events is a church camp June 28th through July 2nd. Kids is the 28th and the, through the 30th. Teens is the 30th through the 2nd. So get signed up, kids and teens. And anybody else that wants to help, get with us. I'm sure we're going to need lots of help there. There's a couple of different ways you can sign up. So you can look on here to figure out those ways. There's a Google Forms, and then we have paper registration also in the lobby. A lot of fundraisers coming up. Leanne was here at the first service, so I called her out on this. But she's got a bag raffle right now. There's a fish fry coming up, a dodgeball tournament, and then she's going to sell some T-shirts in June. So if we got a kid that wants to go, we want him to be able to go no matter what. We don't want money to be the issue. So that's what the fundraisers are for. And uh, we've had people just donate money. I, I know personally that have just donated money for kids to go to camp. It's awesome. If you feel that, just get with me or Shana, Tara, Dustin, any of us, and uh, we'll bless somebody with that. Other events this summer already planned is a pool party on June 2nd at Ava. And then BBS in August. Promotion Sunday's coming up for the kids to be moving up. What do I get moved up into on Promotion Sunday? Boy, it's quiet. Nothing. <laughs> Senior citizen. All right. May 16th is when the kids will change classes. Um, if you're brand new here, you may not know this, but if you've been here, you must not be listening, but we're on the move again. The building is coming along very well. Um, Base, the kids' part, the sheetrock's down the upstairs. It's going to start being finished this week. Basement is totally framed out, electric ran. A gentleman stopped by yesterday, did the insulating, so we're ready to hang rock in the basement, which we'll probably work on this week, Benji, evenings maybe? Later in the week, okay. Later in the week, if you're dying to hang rock, if we get it there, holler at me. I'll, I'll help you get in there, but... No, we do need to hang some rock. I think we've got a guy that's going to be doing a lot of our finishing for us. Uh, showed up this week. We're going to try to get him in there and get that rolling. And then we'll be doing a lot of painting. I know anybody can paint, so come up. If you see lights on and you just want to see the church or walk around in it, come over. We don't. We, I mean, we might put you to work, but we might just let you look, too. I don't know. But, no, stop and see it. It's awesome. Stop and pray over it. Um, Sanctuary is getting really close. Need just a, some lighting, a stage built, stuff like that. But it's getting really close, guys. And uh, we were pretty full in the first service. And look around, there's not a lot of seats in this service. So we need it as quick as we can, but it'll happen when it's supposed to happen. Uh, Street Church, next Saturday, 4 o'clock at Kabul. Martha and Mary's, is that what's called? Martha and Mary's is where that will be. Uh, you can catch Ken after church if you got any questions on that. There's some flyers, too, around here if you want to give some out. And if you are new here, we got Connect cards, or you can shoot the QR and uh, fill that out. We would love to have a record of you being here. I think the other, the other thing, Shana started, I guess I'll give Shana the credit for this. She started putting this in the bulletin. It says, one of the best ways we can grow together as a church family is to serve together. And... Uh, you know, just like yesterday, a gentleman come in the, uh, when we was over there working yesterday, and I got to visit with him while we worked, and I know he's so much better now just because he stopped by and carried some boards for us and got to visit with him. But serving is so important, and that's why I told you I had a green note, a big ticky tack, sticky note. And uh, this, is, this is a desperate need in our church, and I know you guys love this church the way I do or you wouldn't be here. But we need some children worker substitutes. We're not asking for full-time children's workers. This is people to fill in when people are sick. Yeah, we would always take if you're feeling called to be full-time. But, um, but yeah, we need some substitutes. Um, the only, if you're going to be a substitute, we have to do a background check on you, and that's it. But we would love to have some people. We have people sick and 
people that can't show up and we're having trouble filling spots. With this many people, I know there's a bunch of kids down there, I'm sure. So be with that and just pray about that and let us know if you're interested at all. And then Pastor Dustin's going to talk about the next thing. So you're unmuted, boss. Boss. <laughs> That's not what he calls me when nobody's around. <laughs> so so thou shalt, shalt lose and lose big. This is going to be a, a weight loss challenge we're going to do as a church if you're interested in being a part of it. Um, so here's, here's what it costs. Zero. It doesn't cost anything. All you have to do is catch up with Shana, Tina, or Brooke to get signed up, and they will take your initial weight. We won't broadcast that at all. And it's going to be judged by percentage you lose because we know that men can just, like, stop drinking soda and lose 30 pounds. So we'll do it by percentage. And, uh, well, at least I hope that's how that works. So we'll see. I'm not quit yet, so i got to start. But there's going to be uh, prizes. First prize is actually going to be a $300 gift card to Academy. Um, second prize is 150 to Academy. And uh, third is a $100 gift card to Academy. So got to be 16 years old and up, and we'll weigh every week. And we'll talk more about that as it comes up. But you have to be signed up, and you have to get your weight in buy the first or you can't be a part of it so it's an easy way to you know take care of the temple right it's supposed to be a temple not a temple i mean <laughs> more of a more thimble shape than temple shape but we'll, we'll work on that so anyway want to be a part of it jump in uh, Ana, tina or brooke and they will weigh you and we'll get going all right. So you boss. So what that tells me, yeah, that tells me is we got to start eating between now and the first, right? <laughs> we got to got to weigh in heavy, right? Nah. I, I told the first service if you knew me back in 2018, I got on the keto thing and I I was relentless on it and I got down where I was sickly looking. So that's I guess I'm gonna have to do that again, try to win this, but. I told them I should have got the picture for Terry. I got a picture holding a fish in James's boat, and the fish is bigger than me. And I looked really bad. I don't know why nobody told me. But uh, Tara says she did. But no, hey, guys, uh, I missed you guys last week. And uh, I was sitting there thinking I had to take London fishes for the high school. But anyways, we were out, out doing that. But I was sitting there thinking in the boat Sunday, I've been in church my whole life. Uh, Dad was preaching all that. A lot of you guys have heard that. But I don't remember missing church so bad. And I, I hear that from everybody. Everybody just loves coming here. We leave on Sunday. We can't wait for the next time we're coming. And I love that. So let's keep that going. Um, I think that's why people love this place, because we all love each other, right? So the kids have beat us to it. I hear their music thumping. So let's stand. I want to open this up in prayer. We're going to go to time of worship. If you're a teen in here, after worship, follow Tucker, uh, where are you guys headed to? Downstairs. Yeah, downstairs. Be an awesome message, I guarantee it. Tucker is not nervous at all. <laughs> all right, guys, let's let's pray, and we're gonna go to a time of worship. Um, I, I, I'm I'm tired, so you don't have any excuse to fall asleep today because I gotta stay awake. You gotta stay awake. I was up till 4:30 this morning. It was prom yesterday, right? And so my son was out. They all, you know, after prom, they all got to come back to Mansfield and then go back to Springfield to have IHOP because, you know, whatever. It's all good. So, so I stayed up like, like yeah, I can't sleep when my kids aren't like somewhere safe at night and I got to know where they're at. And I just, I'm, I'm tired, but I'm excited and the Lord has energized me. And as we were, as we were down here worshiping, I just felt his presence. I don't know about you, but I felt this tingle. Like all through my body, and I'm excited. I got, I've just got it flowing this morning. All through my body, I feel God's presence, and I can't wait to see what He tells us today. I, uh, it's been an interesting week. It's been an interesting week. We've all got situations going on in our life, and and uh, and some of us uh, are in, in in awesome seasons of life, and some of us are are struggling. Some of us are in the beginning of our life, and some of us are nearing toward the, toward the finish line of this life. But I want you to know that no matter where you're at, these words are for you. That this Jesus that died on the cross, rose again, conquered death, kicked Satan in the face, he did it for you. 
He didn't, he didn't just do it for some of us. He did it for all of us. And, and, and we started this series last week called the before, now, and after. We, we talked about before, about before our relationship with Jesus. And I know even in the room today that with this many people, there are some people in here that are still in the before part. And that's okay because we're all there at one point in time or another. So, so it's okay to be there, but I want you to understand that that's not the end game. That's not the place to stay and that's not the place to hang out. That there's this place called the now. But let's talk about that before real quick. That's the before, but the, the life before Jesus, the life that you were, you were freely sinning and, and, and living this, life, this earthly life for pleasures of this earth and, and just having fun in the flesh and, and doing what just felt fun and, and enjoyable because that's what we do. That's our human nature. Our human nature is to enjoy everything we possibly can and, and, make, and make the most of of everything to be fun. But listen, here's the deal. It would be great if, if there was no sin involved in that, but most of the time it encompasses sin and invites sin in and leads us down this trail of, of terrible situations. And we talked last week about how there's two types of sin, right? There's, there's the, the sin we're born into, the original sin, the sin we picked up from just being the lineage of human beings, of, of Adam and Eve, because they sinned and, we, and it just passed along through the generations. Everybody that's born is born into that. And then there's the sin that we do willingly of our own accord, and we can't blame anybody for that, because that's our choice. And so those two sins are rampant in our life, even if we're really good people. Even if you're like a really nice person and do good things for people often, those two things, those two sins are still evident and real in your life. And so we need a Savior. So we need Jesus Christ. We need his, his death, burial, and we needed his resurrection. Because without it, we have nothing. We can't keep all the laws, all the rules. We can't even keep them straight most of the time. So we needed a Savior, and we needed an example. And that was Jesus. And that is Jesus. And that will be, continued to be Jesus. And so and so let's talk about the now. The now that I'm talking about is that moment you say with your mouth, I need a Savior because I'm a sinner. I, I can't do it on my own. I've tried. I've failed. I've tried again. I've failed again. And, I, and I've tried again. And I've failed again. And we can say it multiple times in our life. And so, and so we know, we realize we need a Savior. So maybe at an altar at a church or at a, at a friend's house or maybe on the phone with somebody or, or whatever the situation is, you were led to the Lord. And you believed in your heart that he is who he says he is. And you confessed it with your mouth aloud that he is who he says he is. And, and that is how you got saved. And that's how you get saved. And then that is the now. That's the, that's the now I want to talk about. Because we talked last week about the before Jesus life. I want to talk about the now with Jesus life. And I would love to be able to tell you that it just it's like a bed of roses. It's perfect. It's awesome. But sometimes it's more like the fertilizer you put on the roses. Sometimes it's the manure and it stinks a little. But you know what? What matters is the end game. And we'll talk about that last week, or next week, last week. We'll talk about it last week. We'll talk about it next week. That's the after. But right now, I want to talk about what it means to live with Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because we get it wrong too often. Matter of fact, we get caught up on some stuff that doesn't matter. If you're a believer in Jesus, you get caught up on things that really have no significance in your eternity, but you get so caught up on those things that you don't let yourself be available to Jesus like you're supposed to be when he's your Lord and Savior to be used by him. You know, I was listening this week and I was, you know, and I don't really care what your opinion is, so don't worry about shouting it out. Um, 
so I was listening this week about, you know, you got the, you got the, all the shots for the virus. And I was listening to this one guy talk about how the, the, you know, the, the, there's something in the shot that is the mark of the beast. I want you to understand something real quick. Those types of things, we don't need to worry about that. Because first of all, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, get in the Word of God. See, I, I'm using that as an example because we worry about those types of things. And if you're a believer in Jesus, you won't be around to watch the mark of the beast. There's called a tribulation. You won't be hanging out for that. But we get so caught up on those things that we want to argue on Facebook. We want to argue on, on, on social media and, and the platforms. We want to get so mad about it. I just use that as an example. I could go on and on about the things we get caught up on. And we use it to, like, argue with people instead of saying, do you know that Jesus loves you? But we get so caught up on it that, that they're wrong or they're wrong or, or, or whatever. You know, people have their own choice. They've got to make their own choice. They have their own free will, so much so that God gave it to them. And all we can do is tell them about Jesus. That's what we can do. But we, we get caught up on things like, like that. And when I listened to that, it was like, I was like, man, that just kind of defines what we get hung up on as Christians. We get hung up on things that don't matter to us. It really shouldn't matter to us what somebody else wants to get a vaccine or, or, or how somebody else wants to, wants to live their life other than the fact that we want to introduce them to Jesus so that he can do a work in their life that we can't. But we, we have this stigma in our life like we've got we've to pick and choose the popular topics and we're going to beat them up over it. And I, and, I, and I just, I want you to understand that the power that we have with Jesus is what we need to harness and use. That power is the ability to tell them what he's done in our life. The power to tell them what he says in his book. That's it. That's it. You, we don't have anything else. Everything else is our opinions, our thoughts, and those are not what we need. And, and you know, I, was, I said earlier, I, I don't want to hear your opinion. And I, I didn't want to be rude, but sometimes we get caught up in our opinions and our thoughts. And you know where we need to take our opinions? We need to take them. It's not like our testimony last week. I'm going to change that around a little bit. We need to take them. I got in trouble from Shana. We need to take them. Maybe we need to write them down on, on a piece of paper and we need to nail them to a cross because our opinion gets us in trouble. Maybe we need to take it and lay it down at the altar because our opinion gets us in trouble. And maybe we just need to stop and pray, God, help me to have an opinion that aligns with your word so my opinion is no longer my opinion, but it's yours. I'm telling you, there's something out of this book. That really gets me excited. But I want you to understand that that the problem we have a lot of times, and I remember this when I first got saved, is I thought everything would be perfect right then. And And I was disappointed. But then I had people come alongside and show me how to live life. They didn't just give me all their opinions. They walked with Jesus, and I watched them walk with Jesus, and they invited me in on their walk. And I look back now, and I'm like, that was the coolest thing anybody's ever done for me. It, it didn't cost a thing. It cost their time. It cost, it cost their, their, their dedication. But that wasn't even their dedication to me. It was their dedication to the Lord. I just got to be the part of it. And, and, and I want us to get that from Scripture today, that it's, it's really a whole lot less about us, this walk with Jesus, than we probably think it is. It's all about Him. It's all about Him. But we get to be blessed, and we get to be exalted in the process, which we don't deserve to be exalted, but He'll do it. He'll lift us up out of this muck and mire and ugly and, and, and out of this treacherous life that we're in. And he'll start to wipe us clean and dust us off and put us on a path where we can, where we can be used for his goodness. But silly people that we are, 
we look at these other paths and we're like, oh, I could really, I could really help them. Let me go over here. I can help them. Well, you can't help anybody. He can through you. We've got to realize where we're at on this. And so I want you to jump into 1 Peter 4 with me. I love Peter. I think he'd have been a wild, crazy dude to hang out with. I think the disciples would have been phenomenal. Because, you know, they were just real guys. They were real guys trying to figure it out, arguing with each other, having their own opinions, calling each other out. And then what would Jesus always do? He would rein them in and bring them to him so they could see what they needed to have. Jesus never, never in Scripture does Jesus say, Oh, I think you're, I was going to say this, but I think maybe you're right, Peter. Maybe your idea was better than mine. No, 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 maybe, maybe Thomas, maybe, maybe I should doubt a little bit. No, no, Jesus was very clear. He brought them in. And he would show them how to walk. And so jump with me to, to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. And I want, I want to read this, and we're going to dive into it a little bit, because this, this is about the grace of God, which is exactly what we have to have in the now. And so, since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves in the same way of thinking. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. I want to stop there because I want you to, I want you to really understand what's happening. And then we're going to go through the rest of this straight through and then we'll come back. But I want you to understand that nowhere in here does it say, I need your opinions. I need what you guys think. I need you guys to, to pull together the best plan you possibly can. And that's the one we're going to run with for eternity. No, it says, it says Christ suffered in the flesh. Arm yourselves and, and, and with the same way of thinking. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from, from sin. And that, that, that simply, simply means it's not about your joy and pleasure when you're saved. It's about being used to continue to bring people to Christ so that after this world's done, after we've drawn our last breath, after we've been called up to heaven on that, on that last day, on, if you get that far or maybe you die in the process, whatever it is, when you draw your last breath and you're before God, it's with God forever. That's the joy. That's the excitement. That's what should motivate us. That should be what drives us. That right there is the only opinion you need that everything I'm going to do right here is going to glorify God. So when I stand before God, he says, well done. Because he's not going to, I can pretty sure he's not going to say, well done, Dustin. You really rewrote scripture so they understood it better. That's not going to happen. I know me. I've seen me. I'm not very smart, but I can read this word and tell you what he's telling me. And I, my hope is that you get in here and start reading this word too. And so, and so you no longer, you're no longer for the human passions, but for the will of God. Have you, have you ever thought about that? That everything you do in your life, when you become saved, when you, when you have salvation and, and Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior of your life, that everything you do, every single thing you do, you should be on your knees and saying, Lord, is this in your will? Not, Lord, it sounds like fun, I'm going to go do it, and then I'll come back and see what you want me to do later. No, Lord, is this in your will? And if it's not, slam that door shut. Even if it's going to the golf course and hanging out with the guys. It seems like innocent fun, but maybe he's got a different plan that day. But we wake up and we put our opinion out there and we go. When God says, wake up, and before you even get out of bed, thank me. And then ask me about your day. So you can get his opinion on what you should be doing. And so let's read on. 
for the time that is that is past suffices for the doing what Gentiles want to do. Living in sensuality, passions, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and lawless idolatry. With respect to this, they are surprised when you do not join them in the same flood of debauchery. And they malign you. But they will give you an account, they will give account for him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is why the gospel was preached even to those who are dead, that though judged in the flesh the way people are, they might live in the spirit the way God does. That's a lot. That's a lot. Man, I, you guys know we're Gentiles, right? He's talking specifically to us. And he's not wrong. He's so right. I mean, we read that and we're like, is that really in the Bible? I mean, did he just seriously talk about don't be getting drunk and having orgies and having drinking parties? I mean, it's in the Bible. It's in the Word of God. It's not Dustin's opinion of what should be in here. Because, you know, if we throw this out to the world, we will be like, hey, how would you rate this? I mean, is it PG-13? Is it... Rated R, is it rated mature audience? I would say it's probably rated mature audience, but it's for everyone. Because the reality is, is we all live in this world and we can pretend like we don't see it. But it's all around us. It's, a, it's, it's all around us, these things. These sinful acts. And not only is it around us, at points in our life it's in us. And so I want you to get this before we flip on to the next, because the next piece of Scripture is going to get real, real intense. So he's telling us right here that these things are happening, that we're living for passions, we're living for drunkenness, we're living for, for inappropriate relationships, inappropriate, in, inappropriate lifestyles. We live in these, in these ways and we live for lawless idolatry. Man, how many things in this world do we idolize How many things in this world do we idolize and don't even realize we do it? We idolize our vehicles, our houses, our cell phones. Man, we idolize our cell phones a lot. We idolize people. It's possible you may idolize your husband or your wife. And and you may idolize your children. You may idolize watching sports or, or your favorite television show. You may idolize fishing. Or hunting. If these things are constantly in your mind and you're doing them constantly at your will instead of asking God if this is His will, then you have now idolized it. Man, that list got big, didn't it? That list just got huge. And and really, to be honest with you, as I sit here, I think in my own life, and it's embarrassing. Man, we wouldn't even want to get that list out. It would be it'd be massive if we sit down and wrote out every single thing that we do that we that we seek our will in and not God's. That's a big list, and all those things we're making idols because we're willing to put them first without asking God. We don't think of it like that, but that's the truth. And here's what's, what's tough about it is, is we live in a fast-paced world, right? We live in a world that's, that's constantly moving. You're constantly going. You constantly do this, constantly do that. And, and you're constantly on the move. And if you've got kids, you're busy all the time. You've got grandkids, you're busy all the time. You've got friends, you're busy all the time. You've got work, you're busy all the time. And you're like, I just don't have time to pray and ask God for all the things that are in his will in the process of the day. And to that, I'm going to say, yes, you do. You're just not prioritizing it. And I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't used to think of it like this. But I think maybe now when I think about work, you know, you get two breaks and a lunch. And you get to do that, that's your time to ask God, hey, how's the next three hours going to work? How do you want me to do the next three hours? Because I'm going to be busy at work, but I need to know what your will is, God. Close those doors that I don't need to go into and open the ones I do. Well, pastor, that's silly because my job's real easy and I've done it all the time. Yeah, but are you inviting God into it? Oh, man, we don't think about these things. It's date night. I've got to go on a date. You need a date. Your spouse, by the way, if you're not going out on dates with your wife, 
start. Shame on you for acting like Dustin used to. I, I, I think that's huge and important that you continue to date forever. Um, but even in that, even in your relationships, you've got to have God's will in that. God, we're going to go on a date night. What is your will in this? What is your will in our relationship tonight? Is there things you want us to talk about, certain things you want us to do? Because we want to be in your will tonight together. You know, my daughter, my daughter, I love her. She's awesome. Heather had to, had to be in the nursery this morning for a few minutes, and John's up here. And we do, a, we do all the youth and children's workers, as many as we can get up here at 830-ish. And, and John's up here, and we're like, oh, Heather didn't make it. And, and, and Callie, I love my daughter. She's awesome. She said, it's okay. When they got married, they became one flesh, so he stood in for her. And I'm thinking, that's a 13-year-old girl that's got more wisdom than me. Because she's thinking about things that I'm not thinking about. Man, I'm so glad. But, but you know, it's those kinds of things where, where we, we discount God in stuff. We discount him in the, in, the, in the little minute things in life when those little minute things might be massive situations that he's ready to use you in, but you haven't asked him to come in. It could be something so simple as somebody seeing a situation that you've invited God's will into, and now you get to lead him to Jesus Christ because you've done what he wanted instead of what you wanted. And that's a, that's a pretty awesome situation. But how often do we do it? Or do we constantly just keep seeking out the passions of life? And so we go on to verse 7. We go on to verse 7. It says, the end of all things is at hand. That sounds pretty intense. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep, keep loving one another constantly, for since love covers a multitude of sins, show hospitality to one another without grumbling. Boy, that, <laughs> without grumbling, that just spoke to my heart. Do we do that without grumbling? You know, I, I just, I'm just going to be transparent with you. My phone rings all the time, and I, and I love that because I want to be doing whatever God wants me to do. But there are times when I've got to go do something that I don't want to do. And I know that I'm supposed to do it. And I'll be putting on my shoes complaining about going to do it. And every time I show up to do it, I'm blessed, but in the process, I'm grumbling. And that is not honoring God. So it's got to be a mind shift. And I'm certain I'm not the only one that does that in this room because people are inconvenient, don't you know? People are inconvenient. But they need you. They need you to be asking God, how can I be used in your will to help them? And sometimes he'll say, this is it right here. And sometimes he'll say, it is not your job to help them. I got somebody else for that. But instead we think we've got to do it all. And so we go on. We go on after we get past the grumbling there. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength of God, supplies in order that everything... God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And this scripture right here, we can stop right there and we can see exactly what it's supposed to look like in the right now. Exactly what it's supposed to look like in this walk with Jesus Christ every single day. It doesn't say it's going to be awesome. You're going to really enjoy every moment of it. No, quite the opposite. Sometimes you're going to go home and you're going to be like, man, this was a day full of things that I did not personally like to do. But God, thank you for letting me do it. Thank you for blessing me with the opportunity to go out there and do something that I would have never done because I know that you're going to get glory from it. Do we ever do that? Do we ever give God the glory in the things that we hate to do? 
Or do we sit around grumbling and complaining and griping? And, hey, you know, if you're going to grumble and complain and gripe, why do it alone? Get some people together. It's much more fun. We call it gossiping. It becomes just a grumble gossip fest. That sounds like a great time. That sounds like a place the church should stand. That sounds like an awesome situation. Let's all get together, grumble, gripe, and complain, and then wonder why we're not happy. Because we're not inviting the will of God in, and we're not following what He wants. We're just worried about me, 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 and my opinion. Then I want to hear your opinion, so I go tell my friend what you think. Man, I want us to get something out of this. I want you to walk away knowing that you, once you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and it never gets old telling people about salvation. I'm going to tell you, if you've never got to lead someone to the Lord, you are missing the most awesome gift that you could ever receive. There's nothing better than that moment when they look at you and they've received salvation and you see that cleansing in their eyes. And then you just want to show them, hey, stay in God's will because otherwise you're going to be going to go down your own path and maybe be right back where you were. But instead, we sometimes we stand back and we're like, that's great, good job, and then we don't ever talk to them again. We've got to draw them in. We've got to walk with them. We've got to lead them. We've got to disciple them. You know, there's all these disciple programs that I've been reading through for the church, and we're going to have some coming up. But the best discipling programs are when you wake up in the morning and you ask God what you want to do, what he wants you to do for the day, and he starts putting people in your path, because then you're discipling on his will instead of yours. It's easy to disciple the people you like, because you like talking to them. But then God just may say, hey, you know what, I'm going to put all the people that you don't like, those are the ones I want you to disciple. Because that's my will. Because you have something, a gift that he's given you that they need to hear and see and walk beside. And when you do that, you do that with a, with a loving heart. Not with a heart that says, I'll do it, Lord. But when I'm done hanging out with them, I'm going to go grumble to my friends. All day long I've had to deal with blah, blah, blah. So annoying. But God keeps putting them in my path. Well, what a shame. What a shame the Lord would use you to lead someone to Jesus. What a shame. And so we have this, we have this amazing, this amazing varied grace. I love this because this is where we're going to kind of hang out for a minute. Because this varied grace is something that Christians get hung up on and they get stuck on. And there's this, I would, I would have loaded the video and watched it today. There's this thing called One Time Blind. It's great videos. And they have this deal where, where these people... Where God, it's, it's a little skit, and, and Jesus gives each person a different size Coke. One gets a little tiny one, and one gets a 20-ounce Coke, and one gets a can, and one gets a the little mini can, and one gets a two-liter. And then they're looking at each other's gift from Jesus, and they're getting upset because theirs is bigger. And that's how we are, right? It's, I mean, we may not announce it. Hey, that, that's me. I'm, I'm the one that's like always comparing my blessings with somebody else's blessings because theirs is always better. But that's how we are. As Christians, we've got to be careful not to be like, oh, man, why do they always get that? Because here's the deal. God can do with a little can and your willing heart the same he can do with somebody else in a big can. It's about your willingness because God doesn't need anything except for you to be willing. And he can make the most amazing things happen. You know, you see all these evangelists you got Billy Graham and, and Greg Laurie and all these evangelists through time. And you got, they preach the, you know, big, huge stadiums full of people. And everybody's like, oh, man, how did they get to that point? Well, why does God give them the blessing of being able to preach in front of, or teach and watch all those people get saved? Why, does, why did they get the blessing of that? I want to be able to see, I want to be able to watch and lead a thousand people to get saved. Well, maybe God's plan for you is to lead just one that's going to go lead a thousand. And maybe that, maybe one of those thousand is going to go lead another 10,000. And maybe one of those 10,000 is going to go lead a million. And then God's going to look at you when you get to heaven and be like, thank you for being obedient because you were obedient to the one. Millions got saved. 
If you wouldn't have been obedient, I'd have had to use somebody else, and I'd be talking to them about that. But it was you that was obedient in that little moment in time that seemed so insufficient and so, so lame because they weren't a normal person because God never puts the normal people in your path. Right? Because God's people are abnormal. If he's giving you somebody normal, you may need to pray again and ask if it's his will. God, these, are, these people are really too normal. These, you sure? You may need to weird them up a little bit. Maybe that's why they're with you. But, but you know, you, we've got to stop comparing my blessings versus your blessings because that's when we get caught up on things. And we do it as churches. We'll be like, oh, you see, that church, is, they've, they've not had, and, I, and I'm, I'm guilty of this myself. We, we look at other churches and we say, oh, they're, they're just, they're dead and, the, and they're not, nobody's getting saved. And man, my thought is, maybe God wants us to go pray with them and love on them and just keep praying for them because that's what they need. They're in a season of prayer. But instead we see something different and we're like, oh, well, they're not doing anything. They're not active. They're not busy. Well, maybe they're, maybe they're worn out and they need someone to come beside them and love on them. Not to take over their role and, and to be what they're supposed to be, but to love on them in the process because that's what Christians got to do. We got to stand together, love on each other, encourage each other, and, and pray for God to just show us what His will is in the relationship. We've got to ask Him into our lives. We've got to ask Him to come in because, because it says in Scripture that He's going to give us the ability to speak and do things in His will and in His goodness and in His grace. In his very grace. That means whenever I look out into the world, I can look at all the Christians, and not all of them have the same gifts and talents as me, and they don't all have, and, I, and, and, and it's varied throughout. And here's what's awesome about God, is he'll give you the gift you need at the moment you need it. We don't, we're not just like, oh, well, this is the one I'm stuck with. God gives you what you need in the moment you need it. You know, we talk about, you know, give us, give us our daily bread. That daily bread is, is everything. That, that daily bread is everything I need today to do your work. Not just food on my table, but I need strength that only you can provide, God. I need encouragement that only you can provide, God. Now, it helps when my brothers and sisters in Christ come alongside me and encourage me. And then when I go inside them and encourage them. But really, in the very end of the day, the one that I need is Jesus. That's my encouragement. That's my excitement. That's, that's what keeps me going. Otherwise, I'm just a guy up here just yelling about a bunch of stuff that doesn't matter if I don't have Jesus in the center. And I've got to do that, and you've got to do that. And if we're believers and we're living in the now, which means I'm living with Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior... I'm not in the before. I've asked him to be my Lord and Savior. I'm going to ask him to make his will very clear in my life, very evident in my life. And when I get off base, make it so clear that I've gone the wrong way. I even pray about this now, that if I get off the wrong path, Lord, make it hard on me to be gone. Make it difficult, make me struggle, make me, make me feel pressure and, and uncomfortableness so I know that I need to be looking for you in the midst of it. Because if I'm just comfortable and, and happy and joyful, I may just wander off on my own and then look around when God's not anywhere near me because I've not needed him in my, ma- in my mind, in my opinion, because I've got it under control. When the truth is I've got to constantly be asking him to show me what his will is in my life. Show me what, what you need me to do, what you want me to do. And everything I do, everything you do as a believer, if you're not glorifying God in it, then you need to quit it. Because if you're not glorifying God in it, it's no good. It's no good. It's not the time. It's not the season. If it's not glorifying God, then you just stop, go back a little bit, and just start praying. And, and start praying and asking God, what do I need to do to, to get past this hurdle, to get past this struggle? And, and there are things in our life, in the moments in our life, in all of our lives, when sin will creep in, and we've got to be sure that we are quick to notice it. That's the thing about being a Christian, about being in a relationship with Jesus, that you push to understand his word. You push that relationship with Jesus to the point that when I make a mistake and I sin, I feel so uneasy about it that it bothers me. 
It's not like the old me before I knew Jesus when I could sin and really not even care because I didn't know him. I knew Satan because he was in and out of my life. I didn't care. But once I had Jesus, I didn't want to go back to the old me. I didn't want to let Satan creep in anyways. I didn't want to let him have an avenue or a door to me. I want to have just Jesus and nothing but Jesus. And, and I, as I build that relationship, as, 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 as I work on understanding him more, which means reading the word of God, because in the now I've got to read the word of God. And as I notice things in my life, if they're not honoring and glorifying God, then they've got to stop. Because that's obviously not in God's will. And I need to reboot, we need to reset, re- get re- reestablished back in, the, in, in, in God's will and then start again. It doesn't mean I give up and walk away and God it wasn't with me the whole time. He just left me. No, it means I walked away from him and I started doing sinful things. And I had to realize I was wrong and reset things. And call upon the only one that can reset it for me. Reset this. I need, I need, I need to be wiped clean. I need to repent. I need to, be, I need to be free of the sin that I'm letting come in. You see, one of the things we don't understand is as we constantly continue this walk as believers in Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior, as we constantly have this walk in salvation, we will constantly be having to repent. Sometimes people think, oh, I, I, I asked him to be my Savior. I'm good. I don't know your denomination or what your doctrinal beliefs are. Here's mine. That's all I've got. And, but here's my doctrinal belief. Because Scripture tells me that when I make a mistake, I need to sincerely repent. It doesn't mean, oh, he wiped me clean once, I'm good. It means I made a mistake. I need to say I'm sorry and seriously ask him to help me so that I can be better for him. Not just so I can look better, but I can be better for him. So I can be equipped and used. Because the only way I'm equipped is by repenting and asking him to equip me. That grace and those gifts, that's the equipping. And then he'll send us where he wants us to be. And he'll put words in our mouths that we need to say. And he has the Holy Spirit working on our life and, and cutting out the ugly and getting rid of the, and getting rid of the things that are are harmful to us. It's a constantly moving salvation. For those of us that think that we got saved over here, we're good, we don't have to change a thing, we can keep living however we want and end up over here in heaven, I'm not going to tell you wrong, but I wouldn't chance it. Not when all this says you need to repent and ask for forgiveness and keep seeking God's will in your life. I'm not here to write your doctrine. It's already written. But I'm here to tell you, I wouldn't chance things. I wouldn't chance my walk with the Lord. I wouldn't chance my eternity. I'm not down with gambling. I'm not going to gamble with my eternity. I'm not going to gamble with my walk with Jesus. I'm going to be sure to read the Word so I can be as close to Him as possible. I don't want to lose the Father. He won't lose me, but I might walk away from Him. I've got to be careful. You know, when I was a, a younger father... When my kids were little, I used to make them stay right beside me and hold their hands or I'd make them hold on to the shopping cart because I worked at Walmart for a long time and, you know, there's nothing better than those kids that love to hide in the clothing racks. <laughs> there's nothing better than shutting down the whole store so you can find your kid in the clothing rack. And I always made sure my kids were right beside me. I wasn't going to lose them. I knew that they needed to stay right here where I told them to be. But I also knew they were children, and then the shiny object might pull them away. Some passion for something they walk past. Some desire to touch something that they just see over there, because they're little kids. So as a father, I show them a path to where to be. I show them where they need to walk and how to stay close to me. And I show them all those things, just like God shows us how to walk with Jesus. And whenever I'm pushing the cart and I start to see him let go of the cart because there's a shiny toy over there, I'm like, Mm-mm, don't do that. Stay close. We'll look here in a little bit, right? 
I'll give you the blessing of looking at that when we're done with what we have to get done. And I think about my walk with the Lord. Sometimes I'm holding on to the shopping cart and he's got me going in the right direction. I'm like, ooh, that's shiny. I'll be right back. And he's like, mm-mm. If you're in tune with him, the Holy Spirit will say, "Mm mm-mm. I'll give you those blessings that you need and you desire in my time. We've got somewhere to be right now. We've got somewhere to walk. And I want you to understand that, that this, this walk with God is just like that. I wouldn't, I'm never going to sit up here and say how you should believe other than the doctrine of the Word of God. It's up to you and your free will on what you're going to believe. But I will believe every word of this to be truth. And if he tells me not to walk away, I'm not going to walk away. He says, no one can take you from the Father. But he doesn't say, I can't get lost and start watching shiny objects. I've got to repent and come back to the Father. And so today, as we talk about walking in the now, as we talk about a relationship with Jesus, Last week we talked about the before, about what it looks like without having Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you're in the room right now and that's you, you're still in the before, don't be like, oh my goodness, I'm so embarrassed. I was there and every other person that says I'm a believer in Jesus Christ was there. They had a moment in time when they said, now it's going to be different. They had a moment in time they said, I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to believe that he died and he rose again. He conquered death. He took all the, the, all the sins with him. All I have to do is give them to him. Because he's a good God. Because he loves us. And we are all at some point in time in that before. But I want you to know there, cause there now when you say, I need a Savior because I can't get it right. I keep falling. I keep tripping up and making the mistakes over and over again. And there's no 12-step program or no relationship with any man or woman that can get you to where you need to be like Jesus can. You've got you to seek the one that can actually save you. And there's the now. If you're in this room right here, in this big, big old little room, it feels big. When we got here, and it shrunk when we got inside. If you're in this room, you're like, I've got a relationship with Jesus. I know him as my Lord. I know him as my Savior. I've I've had a relationship with him. If you can say right now that that's where I'm at, I'm going to tell you, you still have moments you need to repent. And maybe there's something right now where you're like, I just I just need to I need to spend some time with the Lord. You know, you're in a lot of people in this room, but you're not. You're, you're with family. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, we're brothers and sisters. We're called to, to repent and to hold each other accountable and, and to walk with each other. And these altars up in front of us, right here, that are in front of us, that's got to be our home. If you're a believer, this has to be your home. You've got to come down here and talk to the Father. You've got to come down here and ask Him, what's your will in my life? If you're not a believer, come find Jesus. If you are, come ask Him what you're supposed to be doing. Come ask Him how to be the husband you're supposed to be, how to be the wife you're supposed to be, how to be the man or woman that you're supposed to be, how to be the child you're supposed to be, how to, how to understand the Bible more. Ask Him these things. You know what He wants to hear? He wants to hear you talk to Him. He wants to hear your voice. He wants to hear you call out to Him. And He wants to help you. The altar's yours. If you, Lord and Savior, come find me. Come find Pastor Hayden. Come find Tucker. Pastor Ken. There's a lot of people that would love to lead you to the Lord today. Folks, let's give the Lord some praise this morning, all right? We've got a few people still up at the altars this morning. These altars are going to stay open. Um, if you have some, if, if you've never been to the altars before, do not be afraid of coming up here to these altars and praying, folks. They are. Um, th- this is just a great spot for you to get on your knees and just 
let the Lord have some things, all right? Um, we have uh, tithe boxes out in the hall. We have one at the back of the sanctuary. Folks, during the week, um, we would love to have you to some of the things that we have going on during the week. Monday, we have it all women's class. Wednesdays, we have classes for kids and for Okay, we've got, what are you thinking? You, Drew, Hazel, you liking it? It's pretty good, isn't it? It is, it is that good. What, hey, when we, you, we were reading from Peter this morning, were you picturing the actor? I was too. If, folks, if you haven't started on that Chosen series, start on it because it is wonderful. Um, let's see. Um, Thursday night's real life classes. Uh, Saturdays is kind of a group work thing down at the new church. We would love to have you there. Uh, before we close, I wanted to share with you just a quick story that I heard last night. Last night, I had to go to a little political meeting, and there was a congressman there, and this congressman was a really good, uh, he, he, he spent a lot of time with President Trump. And so they were up there around Thanksgiving last year, and um, Trump's cell phone is over on a table, and it starts ringing. And Trump kind of looks at it, and he kind of jokes. He said, hey, is that your phone? And, and this congressman said, no, we can't have our phones around you, Mr. President, which is one of the rules. I didn't know that. And uh, so anyway, but the president reaches over, and he hits, and he answers it, and he hits the button so it's on speaker. And it's a televangelist, a, a big internationally known televangelist. And this uh, televangelist tells the president, um, he said, Mr. President, I feel like I am called right now to pray for you. And so everybody in the whole room stops. And this televangelist just prays for the president right there. Um, and so the reason that I shared that with you is imagine if all of your friends had a guy or a gal who would call up and say, hey, I'm supposed to pray for you right now. Um, first off, think about that pastor. He might be a televangelist. I get it. But that takes a lot of courage to call up the president and say, hey, I'm supposed to pray for you? I don't even want the president's cell phone. I mean, that's a lot of it, uh, responsibility in and of itself. Think about your friends. If they knew that when you called, it might be a prayer coming. Wouldn't that be neat? What if we really were that royal priesthood of believers that the Bible talks about? Wouldn't that be something? You, you know, all those friends out there that you have that are hurting a little bit, um, now, I'm not saying it might not be some weird conversations. You know, you call up Jim. Hey, Jim, what's going on? I'm supposed to pray for you. I'm in the turkey woods. Well, I'm praying anyway. Uh, take your stupid camouflage hat off for a minute. Yeah, uh, I, you think that God would multiply the benefits of that for everyone? Just something to think about. Let, let's pray.